he went through, about throughout the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It is significant for us to today be here where we are, in the Cathedral of Canterbury. As we were told earlier, it is really the, the foundation of Christianity, of the Catholic faith, uh, upon its return to, to Britain under St. Gregory the Great. We know that after the Reformation, uh, after the, the changes that came, this, this real temple of God, built for His glory, was, was taken for use by the Anglicans. But today, in a certain sense, we bring back here again the, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. For a moment, put yourself in the place of St. Augustine, the great missionary to the, the English country. And think that he too offered the exact same Mass that we offer this day here. Over a thousand years ago, God's, God's grace was being poured down upon earth through the holy sacrifice of the Mass, even as it is done today. That people just like you kneeled here and prayed for their own salvation and for the salvation of all of their, their nation. We have a prayer in the booklets, um, which is for the, really the conversion of England. And even now, today, perhaps more than ever, with the increasing numbers of, of Muslims and, and various others, we, we need to say that prayer more frequently. For this country, from which our own is founded, is, is in a certain sense a, the, the mother country in a way. And we need to pray for her to return to the faith fully. Uh, because as we've seen in Europe in our travels, already going from town to town, preaching the gospel in a very public way at the, on the pilgrimage, uh, and even now as we go about offering mass and praying at the various shrines, that there is not a lot of faith left. But the pagan world, in the form of, of secularism, the love of money ultimately, um, has, is beginning to take over even more than ever before. In the Canterbury Tales by Chaucer, not something I recommend reading, as it uh, contains a bit that is not so good, but nevertheless there's a great uh, deal of good in, in that work. And one of the stories does spell out very clearly, it says, Radix Melorum Escupiditas, the root of all evil is the love of money or of things of this world. And I think that if we examine ourselves and find our own faults, that we'll find that in some way it's an attachment to the things of this world. And so in a certain sense, by what King Henry VIII did, by seizing all the churches of, of the, from, the, from the Catholic faith, in a certain sense we, we lost that, that attachment to these great monuments. Indeed, we had to build up other ones when the martyrs returned to bring back the faith. But today we have the example of a martyr who dies really for, uh, for, the, for the Catholic faith above any else. Uh, he was a man who was favored by the king completely. Thomas of Becket was indeed a very close uh, friend to, to the son of the king. He was a man who had the complete trust of the king and was one of his chief counselors for the longest time. But because he would not give in to a whim of a man, he was slain upon a whim. And today we'll have the opportunity to venerate, as we pass by actually as we came into this chapel, the place upon which his blood was spilt. To think, to martyr, to slay a bishop in his own cathedral. And these men claim to be knights, claim to be those who would hold up, uphold honor, and ultimately the honor and glory of God. We need to revive in our nation and in our, all, all of our countries, that true honor, which is first and foremost for the glory of God. When we were in the, the crypt of Chartres Cathedral, it was mentioned that there was formed another military order. And that order was, was aimed at the glory of God. But we need to create these again in our own heart. We need to band together as true brothers of Christ, that we can stand up again against what we know 
will be martyrdom. Perhaps we ourselves will not lose our heads to the sword, but others will. And we have to be willing to do so if that's what is asked of us. And so let's pray today in this, this really shrine of a martyr for the grace of martyrdom. It's a special grace. It's not one that any of us can earn. No matter how much we fortify ourselves by, by good works, no matter how much we, we strengthen our bodies to endure the, the harshest of sufferings, if we are not granted that special grace, we will fail. And so we must pray and ask God to be able to endure whatever martyrdom He gives us, because we will have one, whether it be the white martyrdom of, of endurance, as many of the Catholics did here, who were taxed almost to poverty under, under a regime that was contrary to them, or whether it be to really lose our lives for Christ. But let us pray today to have that strength and that grace to be able to die as martyrs, if that is what God asks of us. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.